Hey everybody, I'm Brian, and I'm here to talk to you about hydroponics. Um, if you're unfamiliar, hydroponics is a form of gardening that uses water, um, and only water, really. Um, it's done without soil, so it's not in the ground, um, and you're kind of enriching the plants with nutrients through that water. Um, you can kind of see a picture here of somebody growing lettuce hydroponically, um, and so you get this kind of net cup that holds the plant, and then the roots just kind of grow up from that, and they sit directly in the water. Um, the benefit of this is that you generally get bigger yields, and you actually use a lot less water because the water doesn't drain out into the soil. Um, and it's also really great for hobbyists, people who like to garden. A lot of times you're doing it in an isolated environment with LED lights for you know your growth cycle, and then there's lots of DIY kits and other kits available. So this is the system I have. It's called the Rise Garden. Um, bought it a couple years ago. Um, it's an at-home hydroponics kit. Kind of comes with all the different pieces and you assemble it. Um, it's got three different tiers for growing the different plants that you want. And then there's a reservoir of water kind of down in the bottom. It includes kind of everything that you need out of the gate. You're not kind of DIYing anything and then, you know, just because it is kind of a kit that comes of it, um, you're not having to like do a lot of research on how to build like a proper hydroponic system. So this is great, great for beginners. I really enjoyed it. Um, the nutrients though are kind of what make this system a little tedious. So there's a reservoir of water, again, that sits down in that, um, that cabinet below. And every time you add water to the system, you kind of have to rebalance the pH of the water, the, night, the, um, the, the nutrient density. And so you're constantly maintaining the pH of the water at you know, a good level, and then you're constantly adding more nutrients. And a lot of times the nutrients come in liquid form, and they're being added to that reservoir in like milliliter amounts per liter of water that you're adding to the system. So every time you add water to the system, you kind of have to rebalance it and you're dealing with like maybe three different types of nutrients that you're adding, some pH up and down concentrates and things like that. So it can get a little tedious and especially when the system is very mature and you've got a lot of plants in there, you're going through lots of water. So being an engineer, I wanted to improve the problem. So I start with the Raspberry Pi, I've got a raspberry, or I started with the Rise Garden. I've got a Raspberry Pi sitting around. Let's mix some hardware here. I wanted to add some pumps to kind of dose out all of those nutrients into the reservoir. And then, of course, I needed to have an Android app to kind of see and communicate with the Raspberry Pi to do when to dose out all of those nutrients. And then if I added some sensors to kind of read what the pH and the parts per million of the reservoir was, I could get my feedback loop going. I could take readings, see graphs of all of the stuff, and then have the Raspberry Pi kind of automatically dose out nutrients. And then, you know, Raspberry Pi, great, sits on your local network, but if I add a server, something running in DigitalOcean maybe, I can then access this anywhere in the world, dose out nutrients wherever I need to do it. I can do it right here in Amsterdam. So let's start with the Raspberry Pi. Um, so a peristalic pump is something that's really great for dosing out small amounts of liquid. Um, it's got a tube that kind of runs through the middle of it and it works through compressing of that tube, kind of using vacuum to kind of suck the, the fluid through that tube or push it through as well. Um, again, this is really great for kind of dosing out milliliters of liquid when you're kind of dealing with a really strong concentrate of nutrient. The other piece of this is um, sensors, of course. You need to have um, some really high quality sensors. So Atlas Scientific is who I use for my sensors. The top left there is um, an electrical conductivity sensor that is used to measure um, the parts per million of the water. So you can kind of tell what the nutrient density is. Um, it doesn't tell you like the levels of what nutrients you have in the water, but it can kind of tell you how strong the nutrient is in the water, which can then kind of tell you if you need to add more or to add more water to kind of dilute things down. On the bottom right, you have a pH sensor, and um, 
Where I live, the water comes out of the tap pretty alkaline, and so I need to lower the pH value of the water to kind of get it in an optimal range for the plants that are growing. The Raspberry Pi itself is um, wonderful, you know, just pristine hardware engineering at its finest, um, sitting underneath. Um, I'm a master at soldering. Um, it's great. Um, <laughs> this uses pi for j um, to control the GPIO pins for the actual pumps themselves. It also uses pi for j to communicate over I2C with the sensors. Um, I really wanted to do this all in Kotlin native, but unfortunately I have to use the JVM. There are a few libraries that Coroutine specifically that don't, or actually KTOR specifically that doesn't work yet for the Linux ARM64 platform. So hopefully in a couple months now that that's kind of a tier one or tier two, I think, um, supported native platform, I can convert this all over into Kotlin native. Um, so yeah, there's a KTOR client that um, little process that just runs and reads the sensors and then kind of uploads them to the server every minute or so. It then uses a WebSocket to connect to the server to kind of watch for when it should dose out the different uh, nutrients, which are kind of in the back. You can kind of see the bottles there. The server itself, pretty simple. Um, it's running Spring Boot in Docker on DigitalOcean. Um, I'm using Webflux, of course, with Kotlin coroutines to be able to do kind of reactive programming from back to front. Um, the fun thing here, though, is for all of the scheduling things, I'm not using the built-in um, Spring Boot scheduling stuff. I'm actually just linking a Kotlin coroutine scope directly to the lifecycle of the Spring Boot application, and then I can just launch an infinite loop into that and then just delay for however many hours I want to do. It makes the logic really easy, and I'm not dealing with like cron tab notation. Uh, for data, I'm just running MongoDB also um, in a Docker container on that same droplet. Um, this is what kind of stores users. I, I have a, some level of authentication. Um, it then has all of the sensors and their readings, and then I want to add like notifications so that I can see if like my parts per million is too high or too low, if I need to make adjustments at any point. Fun thing here is that um, MongoDB 5 added time series collections. So you can um, store like the sensor readings in a time series collection, and this makes it really efficient for being able to query based on a time range. The Android app itself um, is wonderful. Um, I am also not a UI developer. I am primarily a back end, so um, Spring Boot was my, my jam, but I'm you know, I can draw a graph, I guess. Um, and of course, this is all using Jetpack um, Compose for all of the UI. Um, I'm using Dagger and Anvil, of course, for all the dependency injection and things. Um, and then, because this is all written in Kotlin, the same data models that I'm using for my server, I'm also then able to use for my Android application, as well as on the pot, Raspberry Pi itself for being able to upload readings and things. And so on the left, you can kind of see that top graph is the pH level, and then the bottom graph is the parts per million. Parts per million calculation is actually based on the temperature of the water, and I don't yet have a temperature sensor, so it kind of fluctuates throughout the day as the lights turn on and then turn off as the temperature kind of changes in the water. Eventually, I plan to add a temperature sensor so I can kind of like normalize all of that and actually truly see a trend. And then because I am using Jetpack Compose, I can use JetBrains Compose for a wonderful web UI as well. Um, I get to use all the same state management between those, of course, sharing a lot of that business logic in the UI. Um, and then that KTOR client that I'm using on Android to upload all of the, res the sensor readings and things, I can use both on web and Android um, to pull down all that data and again, kind of sharing all of those data models between everything. All right, so you could probably do this in a lot of different language, languages. So why Kotlin? Um, Kotlin obviously has a lot of really great multi-platform libraries that can be used. So you've got coroutines, 
for all of the you know, asynchronous programming. You've got serialization for being able to do JSON between the Raspberry Pi, the server, Android, web. Um, date time for all of your date management for like when the sensor readings were taking place. KTOR for clients, um, being able to retrieve all of that data from the Spring Boot server on all of those platforms. On kind of the UI side, we've got Jetback Compose, JetBrains Compose, and then I'm using a, a library called KMDC, which is the mater material design components, kind of wrapper for um, Compose for the web. And then, of course, Anvil, the compiler plugin for all the dependency injection. So there's a lot of shared code here. We've got you know, the common data models that everything shares. Um, and then the server can depend directly on that. Um, we've got the client, which also depends on common. And then kind of your Raspberry Pi module, which can depend on all those things as well. And then for your UI, you've got your UI state, your Android, your web, whatever kind of UI you want to use to do all of that. So of course, I can't do a hydroponics talk and not show pictures of what it actually looks like. Um, so this is a little time series, um, left earliest to latest, some lettuce and other things growing in the system itself. Um, and then they can get pretty big and kind of take over the system, uh, which is fun. And beyond just lettuce, there's you know other things that you can grow. Um, I was able to grow strawberries this summer, which was a lot of fun. Um, I have since taken them out, but I did get a good round of a lot of strawberries. So I guess this is all to kind of say that Kotlin has a really great multi-platform ecosystem that you can use really anywhere that you want for any kind of project, um, whether that be Raspberry Pi with embedded programming or server-side or Android UI stuff. So thanks, everybody, for coming to this first lightning talk. <laughs>